Hey, welcome back guys. If you haven't been following, this is the summer movie preview where I kind of go through all the summer movie releases for 2017. This is the July video, so if you haven't seen the May or June videos, do check those out first and then come back to this one. Uh, this video I'll be going through all the big summer movie releases for July of 2017. So without further ado, we'll get stuck straight into it. First big one off the bat is Spider-Man Homecoming, July 7th. Now this is a film that I'm keen for. I'm someone who kind of really dislikes the amazing Spider-Man films. They just did not do anything for me. I know there are a lot of people who really enjoy the amazing Spider-Man films, but don't get me wrong, even though not everyone likes Spider-Man 3, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films are still above and beyond anything that was put out in those amazing Spider-Man films are just I just did not care for what they were doing in those films the characters always just kind of seem so bland in those films and I know a lot of people like the charisma that Andrew Garfield brought to the role of Spider-Man but just as a whole as films the amazing Spider-Man films just don't really hold a candle to what Sam Raimi did so so Spider-Man Homecoming kind of seems like a bit of a return to form for Spider-Man which I really hope is the case uh, we have John Watts directing the film, who directed the film Cop Car in 2015, which wasn't too bad. But well, now Spider-Man is in the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've got Marvel Studios producing the film. Kevin Feige is behind it. We've got the collaboration between Marvel Studios and Sony Pictures, which is something unprecedented and has never really happened on this scale before. It's something really quite spectacular, pun intended. Everyone really seemed to like Tom Holland as Spider-Man in Captain America's Civil War. We just get a little bit more of what we were introduced to in that film and we get to see this young Peter Parker and Spider-Man going through going through high school and normal teenage drama and it feels really like a John Hughes film like The Breakfast Club or Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It really has that vibe to it which I, I mean look I really do love Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's an awesome movie. I freaking love that film. And, espe oh, and especially Weird Science. Weird Science and the late great great Bill Paxton. Good God those John Hughes movies were awesome. This new Spider-Man really seems to have that energy of John Hughes and I think having Michael Keaton cast as the Vulture is a really smart move. I mean, bringing Batman, of all people, to play a Spider-Man villain is just great and really quite ironic for how Michael Keaton's career has gone over the years, especially with Birdman. But And now, you know, he's the literal Birdman and who envied Robert Downey Jr. in Birdman and is now in a film with Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man, you know, the character that he was kind of mocking in that film. But anyway, it's kind of interesting. We get to finally see Spider-Man and Iron Man on the screen together teaming up, which I, I was a big fan of the 90s Spider-Man cartoon where the episodes I really liked were when Spider-Man would team up with another superhero. So there are the episodes where Spider-Man would team up with Iron Man or War Machine. And those were usually the episodes that I really liked the most. I really enjoyed those. So I hope it's kind of just like that cartoon kind of brought to life kind of deal, which would be a lot of fun, you know? So Spider-Man Homecoming, July 7th. I hope it really is a return to form for Spider-Man and we get to see a whole lot more of Spider-Man in the MCU from here on out. But following that, July's a pretty awesome month for the most part. Uh, the following that is a film I'm really damn excited for and that's War for the Planet of the Apes on July 14th. This is Matt Reeves directing who will be directing the Batman following this film. Uh, this is the end of the trilogy that started with Rise of the Planet of the Apes and continued with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. This is capping off Caesar's story as his rise to power with the apes. We get to see Woody Harrelson playing a really ruthless villain, but I mean, it obviously depends on which side of the conflict you sort of agree or disagree with. I mean, if War for the Planet of the Apes knocks it out of the park, which I'm pretty sure it will, uh, we really could have one of the all-time greatest film trilogies ever made, ever put to screen. I mean, these films are fantastic. I mean, the amount of depth that is brought into the films by Andy Serkis and his portrayal of Caesar, I mean, the facial capture work done by the guys at way to digital uh, everything is just so incredibly put together and so moving and you just can't help it help it be excited I mean the war that we're promised in this film just looks like it's gonna be something really special and something really a real spectacle to behold so I'm really looking forward to War for the Planet of the Apes on July 14th following that is a 
big bloody film that I know a lot of people are really excited for, and that is Dunkirk, releasing July 21st. This is Christopher Nolan's follow-up from Interstellar. Interstellar was his last film that released in 2014. We're finally getting the next film from Christopher Nolan. Uh, it's obviously about the Battle of Dunkirk, a World War II film. I mean, you've got Christopher Nolan staples in there, like Tom Hardy and Cillian Murphy in the film, and but you've got even Kenneth Branagh in there, which looks like it's going to be another solid Christopher Nolan film. And the trailers have all looked just spectacular. I mean, the way Christopher Nolan shoots on IMAX is just beautiful, beautiful work. But I know a lot of people are still kind of confused as to why this film was released in July as a summer release, rather than be kind of an Oscar bait film released in October, November, where it could have had, you know, Oscar chances. But I don't know, Warner Brothers, who are releasing the film, obviously have confidence in it as a summer film, as it was awarded the PG-13 rating, which is a bit odd for a war film, I'll admit. You would think a war film would probably be rated R, but I mean, Christopher Nolan has usually worked within the PG-13 rating, so it's nothing really unexpected from him. And I mean, you know Nolan's going to deliver a spectacle either way. So, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see Dunkirk, I think. Warner Brothers obviously have enough confidence to release it in summer, so they're hope, hoping it's going to be a big blockbuster hit, which is, again, strange for a war film, where you'd think a war film would probably want a bit more serious consideration from its audience and a bit more of a mature audience to kind of watch and thoroughly digest the film, much like a Hacksaw Ridge from last year, which was released as an Oscar bait film, more or less. So you would have thought maybe that would be the case, but it's a Christopher Nolan film. I th it'll do well, I think, regardless. I mean, people will come out to see Christopher Nolan films either way, so I think there's a lot to be excited there for. Now, the next film I'm really not sure about, and it's Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, directed by uh, Luc Besson. Uh, it comes out the same day as Dunkirk on July 21st. I think it stars Cara Delevingne and Dane DeHaan, kind of looking more and more like a spiritual successor to The Fifth Element, which I know a lot of people love. I enjoy the film quite a bit myself. Uh, it seems just kind of all out crazy science fiction, just a crazy new world. I mean, the trailers haven't really done anything to kind of grab me just yet, but I'm intrigued, especially if it's kind of like a sort of a spiritual follow-up to Fifth Element. I think there's obviously a lot of passion from Luc Besson with this film, so hopefully that kind of translates well in the final product and it's something that people get behind but I don't know I mean releasing the same day as Dunkirk is an interesting business strategy so I mean I don't know how many people are really gonna go out and see Valerian that film's a really big question mark because even if the film does well critically I really don't know how many people are aware of the Valerian property I mean I know it's a French comic and it's quite popular in France but I don't really know how many people outside of France are really gonna be aware of this Valerian property so I mean we'll have to see what happens as we get closer to the release date. The film coming out after that though, something I'm really really keen for is Atomic Blonde, which releases July 28th, directed by David Leitch, who will be directing Deadpool 2, but co-directed the original John Wick with Chad Stelhesky. And while Chad took on the directing duties for John Wick Chapter 2, David took on the directing duties of Atomic Blonde. So we got kind of two unique flavors and they both kind of helped each other out. You know, they both started together as stunt coordinators for The Matrix and then ended up directing John Wick together. And now they've kind of started to move into their own properties a bit. But Atomic Blonde just looks freaking awesome. I mean, you've got Charlize Theron playing just like a badass female John Wick in a way. I mean, it's based on a graphic novel. James McAvoy and Sophia Batella are in the film as well, in the supporting cast. I think Sophia Batella is kind of like the villain in the film. Uh, and John Goodman's also in there as well, but should be another really awesome, well choreographed action film that's just relentless. And I mean, John Wick Chapter 2 was just freaking awesome this year. It was an awesome, awesome film. If you haven't seen John Wick Chapter 2 or the original John Wick, please do yourself a favor. Go and see those films. Those films freaking rock. So yeah, really excited for Atomic Blonde. And then we come to a film that, in all honesty, I really couldn't give two shits about. And that is the Emoji Movie, which also comes out July 28th, same day as Atomic Blonde. It's a Sony animation film, which should tell you everything. If you hate the Smurf films, you know automatically what to expect. It's another kid-generated hyper-festival animated film. It's 
all these, you know, emojis sort of trapped within this phone universe and Patrick Stewart plays the poop emoji, you know, just, oh, I don't know. Kids are going to go and see it. It's going to be, you're going to see people taking the piss out of it over the next few months. Just, the, the movie just looks ridiculous and I don't know who's asking for it, but, I mean... In a world where an emoji film can be released, I mean, anything's possible, right? I mean, you've got indie filmmakers struggling to get off the ground, but hey, I mean, there's a, there's a movie about a poop emoji. How about that? So that comes out July 28th. Then it's kind of better things. On July 28th, we have uh, An Inconvenient Sequel, Truth to Power, which is the sequel to An Inconvenient Truth, put together by Al Gore as kind of the wake-up call to global warming, so just thought I'd throw that on there. That also comes out on July 28th, and that's the first film did quite well, and a lot of people really drew from that film uh, in discussions about global warming. It really opened up that discussion. So it'll be interesting to see. I think it's probably time that another film like that kind of comes out and wakes people up again. So we'll see how that film does, especially if it's competing with the bloody Emoji movie. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah. So anyway, that's the month of July. Again, if you've been following these videos, uh, the summer movie preview videos, I uh, will be continuing this with the final month, August. Look out for the August summer movie preview video, which will go go and break down all the films that are releasing in August. So, so keep an eye out for that. If you haven't seen the previous videos, the May and June breakdowns, check them out first. Otherwise, stay right here for your monofix. The August video is right around the corner.